they're more than an athlete. A lot of people try to, you know, stereotype athletes and put them in a box. So we have interests, we have creative sides to us that basketball fans or sports fans may not see. Get in touch with your inner self and ask yourself, what do I like? You hear this, bud? This is the new. This is the new sound. I hear it. Let's go. Baby, baby. This is what we're, our next BTS song. Oh. Uh, I thought you were saying this was the new like Real Ones podcast, <laughs> <laughs> Real Talk podcast. Sorry. Oh, Benny, what episode is this? Episode thirty-nine. Episode thirty-nine of the Real Talk podcast. It's your host Joey and Thomas. If you like what you're hearing, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. What's going on, TP? It's another day, I'm living the dream. Uh, yeah, right? I feel like- Man, checked crazy. out the the new spot yesterday. They knocked down some malls for us. Ooh. Painted some malls for us. We're seeing- See where we progress. Want, so seeing where we want things, kind of visualizing things. Big Ikea trip coming soon. No. <laughs> I was just there, chaos. Chaos. Don't go on Sunday afternoons. Yeah, and now I'm going to uh, Massachusetts to film a sports camp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Mr. I guess Mr. Sports guy. I know here. big sports guy. Yesterday, yesterday we were with Elijah Vera Wang, Vera Tucker, Vera Tucker, <laughs> at the Sports International camp. <laughs> oh That's funny because I've I just bought a new. I just got a new spot, so I just bought a new like uh, Vera Wang. Blanket. <laughs> blanket, blanket, yeah. like a uh, throw blanket. All right. Is that what they're called? Throw blankets? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm My learning. man's growing up, dude. I'm learning. He's got the dust ruffles and all that. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, dude. Taste just munching away over there. He's a big muncher today. Well, we'll let him munch away. We'll introduce the who we got on today. Yeah, tell me who we got, TP. Man, Run it today. To I'm genuinely excited for today's guest. I feel like it's been a long time coming. I remember like reaching out a while back, seeing if we can get some stuff going, but he was in season. Amazing basketball star. But today we got on Jameer Harris. He's a former outstanding D1 collegiate athlete, D1 basketball player. Started off at Minnesota University, made his way to American University, and then ended off at Seton Hall where he just blew the doors off. Fan favorite, Go everyone back. loved him. Yeah, and I mean, just like I have done a lot of work for for him and his family. The work ethic there, the Harris way. You're gonna learn about the Harris way. He's also an outstanding artist. He makes amazing music. We've done plenty of work together. Um, Aunt Grace is a big fan. Of Shout out Aunt Grace one more time, baby. Shout out Aunt Grace. She's a big fan of one of his songs. Man, let, let's just have them all. There's a lot to talk about. Let's so. rock it, ladies and gentlemen. Jameer Harris. Woo! It's there. Oh, there we go. I hear me. Yeah, you can pull it all the way, <laughs> pull it all the way in, so you can like chill back and stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah. There you, you work, go. Man. How are you living? Good, man. How you doing? Good, man, can't complain. You know, it was a busy year for you. Yeah, busy definitely. couple of years for you. I, I, I'd yeah. say, man. Ever since you, uh, you came back to Jersey, yeah. I know you spent some time out to Minnesota, American University. How were those experiences for you? Like getting out of, like being a Jersey kid, because you went to uh, the Patrick School yeah. as well. So you were always in Jersey. How was it first time getting out? Um, it was definitely a different experience. You know, um, going to Minnesota, I was kind of, you know, questioning myself and worried about right, how would the new experience yeah. be, you know, being in a different, you know, uh, atmosphere, community. Uh, but it was, a, it was a simply very easy transition. Yeah. Um, Going there was very diverse. The people were very welcoming. Um, it was a very fa family-oriented community based yeah. on the fact that Minnesota is the only D1 school in the state. Oh, really? So all the fan support was all from Minnesota and everything. Yeah. So when I got there, um, you know, it was a bit of an adjustment period for like the first week or so. But mm -hmm. once I got comfortable, I was all good. And then from there, you went to Americans in D.C.? Yeah. So to um, D.C. When I got to American, well, I left. University of Minnesota, uh, you know, it was a great atmosphere there. I learned a lot, but the basketball fit wasn't the the best. So, uh, what's up, man? So, based on that, I went to uh, enter the portal. Uh, yeah. I had a few options, but it seemed like American University was the best fit. Um, and my boy from Jersey, uh, Saeed Nelson, yeah, he uh, was at American at the time. So, uh, and the coach is also from Jersey, mm -hmm. the head coach at the time, uh, Mike Brennan. Uh, he's from Elizabeth, where my dad is from. So, uh, you know, going on the visit there, we had, you know, talks, you know, about Jersey and things of that nature. And I just felt like it was the best fit. And I was able to go there and do what I needed to do. And then from there, 
coming back to Jersey yeah. for your last two playable seasons. Yeah. How was that decision? I mean, I, I remember when we started working together Yeah, when you were still at American University because I first started filming his younger brother. Yeah. Um, you got to come on the podcast too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but, but yeah, like what, what was that like? Like that final kind of, that um, last stepping stone almost. Yeah, it kind of came down to, you know, I played most of my career away from home. I've um, always been like a hometown Jersey kid. So um, when it came down to it, my last two options were Seton Hall, Kansas State. And, you know, I just had that home feel. And I was like, I wanted to finish my career at home, you know, in front of my friends and family, playing in the Big East, which is a very high-level basketball conference, yeah. you know, when it's all right. So it um, felt like the perfect fit. And on top of that, you know, me and my brother, you know, as we do things together, we committed there together. So yeah. it was even more special. Damn, mm -hmm. moving around so much, do you have like any tips to like assimilate to like a new culture and like a new environment? Because I feel like you've kind of been in a, a few different places in like a short amount of time. Oh, um, well, I would say just, uh, you know, be open to change. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. You know, if you are in a routine or you're so, you're so used to something for so long, it could be hard to just experience something different yeah. and kind of embrace it. So I would just say embrace the change and, you know, the faster you're able to do that, the better, the better you'll be off. Damn. Yeah, man. And, uh, like basketball is not the only thing this guy does. May it may not even be the best thing. <laughs> this guy is just a whiz on the mic. He can sing and rap. Like, you know, Five Fingers of Death coming today. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 He's about to get up and leave. <laughs> yeah, nah. Man, but like, obviously, you were playing basketball when you were a little kid. Yeah. When did the the music kind of make its way in there? So when I was about. When I, in my younger years, like around like 12, 13, I used to always write poetry. Yeah. So I always wrote poetry. I had my little notepad like with a basketball outside of it, and I would write poetry and just write lyrics and stuff like that. And I always knew I could sing. I would sing around the house and stuff like that, and I would read my poetry sometimes, and I'm like, yo, these poems, like, I'm rhyming a lot. Like, yeah. I might as well make a song. So um, I went down to, I forget where the studio was, not the one I go to now. Yeah. I went down there to try to record a song based off of my, uh, my poetry. And once I heard it, I was like, nah, I could do this. So I just kept trying to, you know, work at it, started writing every day um, and, you know, getting better as I went along. So at this point, I got about five albums and some change out, maybe a single, um, a few music videos with you, as you know. So, yeah. More to come. Yeah, for More sure. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> was, yeah. it, was it hard to juggle the two? Um, not really. Um, most of the time I did my music in the off, my off time. Mm. Um, you know, where we had off days on the weekends or whatever, I would go record. Mm -hmm. uh, but writing, I could do that every day. You know, after yeah. practices and workouts and stuff like that, go back to my room, play some instrumentals. Yeah, like I feel like I never like, I never got the sense that you were like trying to like, like put your complete all into both of these things. Like you yeah. understood basketball is at the forefront right now. Yeah. I'm going to really just put put my all into that. But- I really got a love for something else over here. Not that it was a hobby, because it's, it's way too exactly. The exactly. stuff's way too good for it to yeah. be hobby, you know, mm -hmm. hobby music. It was like the amount that you put into it and how it was coming out. I was like, oh man, imagine if you just did this a hundred percent. Like at first, at first when I started doing it, it was like, all right, well, I know I can sing. Let's try to make a song, see where it goes. Yeah. But as time went along, I got more and more passionate about it, and I realized. I was getting better and better. Producers were telling me that I had a, you know, a future in it. Yeah. I could really do something. So I believed it. And and now it's like, you know, obviously basketball is my main priority, my first passion, but music's a very close second. And now so. with basketball, where you cause you kind of finished off at Seton Hall. Mm -hmm. Kind of you guys really I, I feel like when you got there, like Seton Hall had, you know, they had Miles Powell, yeah. who for those who don't know was an exceptional guard at Seton Hall. Yeah. Um, and they had their own run, their own flame. And then it kind of, you know, for a year kind of dulled down. But then you came in with a group of other guys. And I yeah. feel like it just really, like, skyrocketed seeing Hall back up. Yep. You okay. guys were winning games. You guys were, you know, nationally known, nationally ranked, I want to say. Yeah, we were. Yeah. And um, last year, yeah. I was able to make it to one game that was, that was like a movie scene yeah. <laughs> out there. Where did you guys initially link? Um, where did we initially link? Was it for the... Uh... For, for the Jersey, Jersey, the Jersey, Jersey music, music yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so That's I originally, um, I originally had done, like, like basketball. I was doing like a lot of basketball edits. Yeah. So his younger brother Jaquan played for a team 
that I had filmed for a couple of times, mm -hmm. a player on there, Quadri I'd filmed for, mm -hmm. from me doing work there. Yeah, we kind of like just linked up. We, we just yeah. sort of got in contact with each other. Yep. Mm -hmm. and started working from there. Like I never even mm -hmm. filmed him with a basketball on his hand. Oh, so it was strictly music videos. There was, yeah, there was yeah, no, no sports. No, no, no sports. Um, and then the only time where I filmed him was like training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But most of the times it was because like, I might have been going for Jaquan. Exactly. Like he was going to be there yeah. too. Like literally never, we were never worried about getting in any like basketball videos. Yeah. Um, You're from South Brunswick too? I'm from North Brunswick. North Brunswick. Right. Yeah. So right. it's right there, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but then the first time I filmed some like basketball wise was when I went to see in Hall for a game. Yeah. yeah. But, is, it, is there yeah. a different level or pressure of performing, whether it be in front of a camera for music or versus like, basketball? That's a good question. Um, uh, no, nah, not really. I feel like it's just a confidence thing. Like, if you're confident in your game, the cameras and lights don't really matter, I feel like. And uh, with music, it's the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I had my first or my only performance. We had, like, a um, scholar-athlete, like, a student awards at uh, yeah. CEO Hall. So all my fellow student athletes were there, and they wanted me to perform because everybody calls me j Real around campus. They yeah. make music and stuff. So I did it, and I didn't know how, how it really was going to go. Um until, uh, you know, I practiced a few times, got on stage, and I was just so confident in my song because I sing it all the time, and I practice it all the time just being on my own time or whatever. So it was uh, fairly easy. I wasn't really nervous up there. I just yeah. did it like I do it, uh, you know, on my free time. So I would say uh, depending on your comfortability level, like mm. it could be harder to do one or the other. Like if you're not – if I wasn't as confident in my music as my basketball, then, you know, it could be a difference there. Yeah. But – you feel like preparation plays a big part into those things because I feel like you you are, like I said, the Harris way, and we'll dive into that in a yeah. couple minutes. But like, you feel like because you 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 checked off all the boxes when it came to training for basketball, and like, kind of same thing ish for for the music side. Like, you knew you were putting all the right steps into that as well. Yeah. Um. Do you feel like the preparation plays a big part into that? Um, yeah, preparation is huge. Obviously, you know, when you get to a big game where you see the crowd or whatever, you'll be a little anxious and have that anxious energy to want to do well. But I'm anxious for you. Yeah, you know, but like... <laughs> I'm uh, not even there sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for real. But like, you know, preparation is definitely key. I mean, I'd rather go into a situation prepared than yeah. to not be prepared at all. So I would say that's for sure a big thing. Have you had like experiences where like you were performing in front of like crowds other than the, the awards? No, that was my only performance I ever had. How'd you, like, is it something that you feel like you got a taste of? <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I think like, go on a little tour. <laughs> nah, yeah, like, for real, I could see myself doing it. Yeah. Like, um, uh, doing it, you know, performing on the stage that night in front of my all my fellow athletes and, you know, the yeah. faculty and staff and coaches and things like that. You know, it felt, it felt good to be up there and mm -hmm. just, you know, embrace what I've been working on and what I've been doing over the years, so. Um, I definitely could see myself, you know, going on yeah. tour, whatever that time came and the opportunity presented itself. I could see myself doing that for sure. And so now you're in a spot like a, I think touched on this a little before where I wanted to, where you're, you're done at Seton Hall and you're kind of making a transition into the next stage of things, either going pro, mm -hmm. putting everything into music. Where do you kind of stand right now with all that? Uh, I'm definitely going to play pro basketball. Um, I'm not exactly sure where yet, you know, it's a lot of moving parts and pieces and trying to figure all that yeah. out. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely play pro basketball and while simultaneously doing my music, writing. I have a MacBook now that I can record my music on. Let's go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll do that and get it to my producer to mix and master when the time is available. But I'll be doing both simultaneously. But yeah. For sure, playing pro basketball. That's awesome. Man. Nah, that's going to be that's gonna, that's gonna be a movie. In yeah, itself. man. I, I can't yeah. wait. We're going to have to document that. Yeah, most so. def. How do you, like, allocate time between the two of them? Uh... I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty easy to be honest. It's like you know. That's I, a good question though, because I yeah. know a bunch of D one athletes yeah. just to practice it. Like, we'll take everything like, out of them. You know, yeah, yeah, take yeah, the for time sure. we got seen in hall. Like, I know it's you know the hard school. That is fucking just that's, juggle. That's, that's more than a full time job. Yeah, for sure. Like that is like extra hours. Cause even being in that position, you have to put in hours on your own. Yeah, exactly. So I really just do it like when I'm on my downtime. So we have practice, maybe a lift. I'll work out throughout yeah. the same day. So three workouts in a day. I'm just chilling in my bed, you know, mm. just watching a podcast or something. Yeah. I'll just start writing lyrics. Mm. And then, um, you know, now with my MacBook, now I can record and have a rough draft of my songs on there. So it's pretty, uh, yeah, just on my free time, man. I just try to do it even though I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. I, was gonna say, like, I feel like that just takes, like, a discipline. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, from somewhere. Like, do you feel like you, you constructed that through playing, like, D1 sports? Or do you credit that more to, because I know 
the Harris is. And what, the, what's the Harris way? I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. So the Harris way is like a, a model that me, my two brothers and my family came up with. It's just uh, a certain way that we approach everything, mm. you know, to, you know, be dedicated, uh, have an extreme work ethic that's, you know, um, unmatched and, uh, you know, to accomplish and defeat any challenge that's, that's presented to us. Mm. So that's how we always, you know, have been um, playing basketball growing up through the years and whatever challenge that we face, we attack this at the Harris way, like. We're going to make it happen. We're going to get through it, you know, so. It's crazy. Yeah. And you're the oldest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. I'm Damn. The oldest. You, you got to be. Jaquan, Jaquan and then Jabron. And Jabron. Damn. Yeah. And it's cool that you guys can hold each other accountable for these different, uh, like, tenants and values. For yep. It's crazy. I feel I feel like they get bigger and bigger the younger they get. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, Jameer is, might be the smallest yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> Jaquan yeah. and then Jabron is like. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Where's Jabron going now? Uh, he's uh, going to uh, college, achieve charter school. Um, you know, Coach Dave Boff that used to coach yeah. Roselle Catholic. He's the coach there now. Oh, cool. So Jabron transferred there, and uh, you know, coach going to build a program. You, you got them in the studio too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Look, oh, how was it? Were they like, I want to get in there? Were you like, hey, you might like this? Too? Yeah, yeah. They were. They weren't like like Jaquan. Uh, he was hesitant to do it at first. He yeah, said, I, I don't know. Like I like Jaquan. Like. You guys are soft spoken. Yeah. I feel like Jaquan's a little more yeah. soft spoken. Yeah, like how was he? He was like at first he was very uh you know uh, hesitant on it. Like he didn't really want to do. Yeah. it. He was like oh, I don't really know. I'm not a song guy. Da 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 da. But once he made the first one, then he kind of fell in love with it. So now from time to time, yeah. you know, he goes to the studio on his own and makes music. I told him he could do it. Um, outside of like basketball, he didn't really know what his other lane would be. And um, you know, I told him I said, bro, you got to just get in touch with your creative yeah. side. You can make a song and. Sure enough, he started making songs, and now he's got a little love for it, too. Glad you bring that up about the, the other lane of things, because mm -hmm. we've had ex-athletes on here, and yeah. that is the the key thing. And, like, was there a moment in time where you learned, even if I do achieve all these things in basketball and I juice it out for everything, yeah, there's got to be something else that I know that I'm either good at or that I can go to once this is all said and done. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you know, music is definitely one of those things. Um, you know, getting my bachelor's from American and journalism, that's trying to take the sports broadcasting route. I thought I'd be very good at that as well. And, uh, you know, outside of that, just being maybe a basketball analyst or, or yeah. getting a coach in the training. So I feel like I have a variety of options that I could 100%. go. Once I'm done playing, I still want to be involved with the game. Um, but, yeah, music is always going to be there. So, you know got options and then like how's that important to like if someone came to you like asking like is it important to find that other lane like you feel like more more athletes should be taking time away from the sport that because it's it's something that you do from when you're yeah. a little kid mm -hmm. you know what i mean like I, what i always said when i got into what i was doing you know i felt like i had hours i needed to put in yeah that I couldn't be looking for any, you know, money or things. Like I had to, you know, go into the gym and, sure. and grind and take on that mentality. Yeah. So like, why is it important yeah. for like uh, people to have hobbies outside of like initially like what yes. they're doing? So like, at, at what point do you find that, yeah, find that time to where you're like, okay, I gotta- I Have other interests outside yeah. of like kind of your main thing? Uh, I mean, I, I honestly, I guess it just comes down to having a mindset that you're more than an athlete. You know, I feel like, uh, a lot of people try to, you know, stereotype athletes and put them in a box and, and say that, oh, you're an athlete, you know, stay over there, stay in that lane. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you know we're, we're human beings at the end of the day. We have interests. Mm -hmm. We have creative sides to us that, you know, uh, basketball fans or sports fans may not see. So yeah. it just really just taking the time to get in touch with your inner self and, and ask yourself, what do I like outside of basketball? And that's simply what I did. Um, and that's how I got involved with music. So I would just advise all athletes out there to, you know, take the time to ask yourself, what do I like outside of basketball? If basketball wasn't here, what could I possibly do? Um, and the more you get in touch with that side of yourself, you know, you'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. Was it hard to uh, kind of change, like, the label on yourself? Like, yeah, I'm a basketball player, now, now I'm a music artist. Was it mm. hard for you to identify yourself as a music artist, like, right off the rip? Uh, or were you, like, probably, like, yeah, I'm doing music now? Yeah, I kind of wasn't, like, it wasn't very hard for me to identify. I just... Once I jumped into it, I just embraced it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, well, I know I'm a basketball cool. player, but I'm, I do this music stuff too. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Because I feel like a lot of yeah. people are like scared to like, can I just be themselves, you know what I mean? And like put out, or like any sort of artist, you're right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a painter. I'm a, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. a graphic designer. Like it's, I feel like it's hard for people, especially like 
in a, like such an alpha mindset to kind of go into like a more artistic direction. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like 100% is, is more so, you know, maybe a confidence thing, but I feel like it's also just, you know, being afraid of what the people may think. Like, yeah. I don't know, outside. Like we live in such like a getting clowned on. Exactly, era, right? exactly. Like people's first thought is like, um, what are people gonna think of me? Exactly, like, oh, like for instance, like you said, a painter, like if people found out that a athlete, let's say a football player paints, you know, he may be thinking, like, oh, they're gonna say, oh, oh like, why do you paint? Like, you're a football player, look at him painting. Like, yeah. you can't, but in order to work your way around that, you just you can't worry about what everybody else thinks. Mm -hmm. Like. That's one thing me and my brothers and my family, we kind of like, you know, uh, go on. Like, yeah. you know, we have our interests, we have our goals, and no matter who believes that we can get there or who doesn't believe we, we can get there, you know, we're going to go do it. So it's just not being concerned about what the, you know, the rest of the world thinks. No, that's really it. Was there anybody that you were able to kind of like look to um, or draw inspiration from? Maybe another athlete that was kind of doing two sides of things? Um, no, nah, not really, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, there's, not a, there's a lot of athletes, older, you know, players that, yeah. have, you know, um, been mentors to me yeah. in the basketball realm, but to do both, like, a basketball or something else or music or whatever the case is, I hasn't really been anybody. Uh, Kobe did it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Shaq. Yeah, we Shaq. Oh, yeah. Dame Dollar, I guess he'd do it, too. Dame. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dame was killing it. Yeah. yeah, we get Dame on. <laughs> sure. So I would say him, like seeing him, like you know, have his rap albums and play basketball at a, such a high level. I was like, it could be done. Yeah. yeah. So when I seen that, then I was like, okay, I could really, you know, take it more serious. So yeah, now that was cool what they did with Dame. Like they even in one of the I want to say like two K NBA two K twenty or nineteen. They put his album on. They there. put his album on there, but not just mm -hmm. that. You can go on like they used to have the park. So you like you create a player, mm -hmm. and then you can go on like this like virtual playground not yeah. playground but like basketball courts oh, like outside yeah, my it's like a little neighborhood you can walk around you'd see like he was on there with his guy mm -hmm. but there was a little like alleyway and in there was a studio they made <laughs> yep and make a song with oh, sick. dollar it was just cool to see like this was never a thing and then just because he showed that like yeah, I'm like he's really good. Like yeah. Dame's like really got bars. Yeah. Um, for someone who, mm. I mean, the NBA is even more of a full time. Exactly. Full time. Yes, yeah. J.R. Smith's got bars too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> artists in the league. <laughs> Dame, Jersey Bridges. kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jarvis Jersey. 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 Uh, Saint, Irvington, I thought. Saint Benedict. Benedict. Yeah. 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 Saint Benedict. He lived in Irvington or something, right? Yeah. 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 Russell Westbrook with Honor the Gift. Like the. Oh, yeah, they got oh, a lot. Of, they got yeah. a lot of artists in the league for real. They got yeah. you know Dame. They got Miles Bridges. Miles they got Bridges. Uh, yeah. Um, Marvin Bagley. Yeah. It's it's a bunch of guys that be making music for real. Yeah, and Jared Jackson be doing it too. So with with um, do you remember first of all like with basketball like the first like mixtape you saw or the first time that you had something had something made for yourself? Um, the first okay, the first mixtape I think that was like crazy to me might have either been Trevor Dunbar's mixtape. Mm. Uh, I think it was a Ball's Life mixtape or something like that, or John Walls because his hoop mixtape was like yeah. craziest to me, mm. like the music, probably the craziest ever. Yeah, for real. So, um, and my first one I may have gotten might have been a uh, Thirteen U. I was playing for Team Final. I think it was a a Ball in Three Six Five mixtape or something like yeah. that. And once I seen that one, I was like, What was that feeling crazy. like? It was special, man. I was I like, I made it. I, was, I made it. Like, I got a mixtape. I'm thirteen. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny because before I started even like picking up the camera. I would watch these like, like the, like the mixtapes of John Wall when he was in high school, and that was yeah. before like people were going to games with cameras. I never thought to myself like, who's the guy sitting there like filming the actual game? Yeah, and then yeah. like now you go, and I'm sure that guy who was originally there is just like, you got kids all around you. I mean, you got like these 17 year olds who got like 50,000 followers. They yeah. got so many like influence, and like they they're just filming the guys. Yeah, yeah. it blows my like. I gotta stay off of Instagram. Like sometimes I'm like, this is just yeah. I'd be so surprised crazy. how how guys be putting it together, man. Like filming all that kind of stuff. I'm like, how do they like <laughs> come together with this stuff? It's like, a lot. That 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 all in itself is like you gotta be married. Yeah. When I was filming basketball, like there was if I wanted to get everything out of that, there was nothing else I could really do. Yeah, like sure. I had to go to gyms an hour, two hours away sometimes. Mm -hmm. Go film like. 
working just as hard as the athletes just get the work in yeah i mean <laughs> sometimes i felt that way cause i was like damn i was like i'm going to the workout and then i'm going home and watching the work <laughs> yeah, exactly. i'm basically doing some film study <laughs> but uh but nah i mean it was all blessings honestly like or else i wouldn't i wouldn't even be here yeah, today exactly. if i didn't i didn't put it in those hours but so like from from there and like doing music yeah you know we did a video together or a lot of people when they're doing something that's just a hobby on the side they're like oh well, I'm, I'm not gonna put too much into it or like invest too much into it how did you know like all right i want to put money into yeah. good production value in terms of like how this sounds and making sure it's it's smooth and clean yeah but also like the content and the things you know what i mean yeah like, and you you knew you wanted to you know portray this the songs in certain ways you know when did the gear start turning for that of like all right i'm in a position where you know i like i remember we'd be on a shoot <laughs> yeah we filmed something at the beach this dude we put we put our stuff way too close to oh, man, that was crazy <laughs> we man. came back and he's like where are my shoes at <laughs> and i'm like man. i'm like why is my bag all wet that's what i'm saying and then it was like a seagull came dog. by, like took I my think, shoes. Yeah, I, th I think a wave came, like yeah. sucked his shoes in, or a seagull something came. like that. But he was just like, I was like, ah, I'll just do two extra door dashes later. <laughs> it was, I was just like, huh? <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. I was like, you got basketball, this that you dash into, <laughs> man. Like, so when did you like, you know, you knew like, you had it in you to put, put more into it than just uh, sitting in your room and writing. I guess I would just say like once I commit to something, I kind of like go all in. It's you want to see what what you can get. Yeah, it's never really just like a uh, oh like I mess around with it. It's like nah, yeah. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. You know, so um, you know when I started making music, I realized that I wanted to kind of be different in my own way and kind of stand out a little bit by you know um, obviously being relatable. You know, uh, rapping and singing about things I know a lot of people can relate to, and you know uh, changing my style and how I deliver it. You know, most mm -hmm. times artists, you know are very vulgar, you know, in their music and stuff like that. I told myself I didn't want to do that. So if you listen to 95% of yeah. my albums and my songs, it's very clean, very straight to the point. I deliver it in a different way. So, you know, we can all listen to it, our parents, our grandparents. 100%. You know, so I told myself um, I'm going to do the music thing. I want to be different and be able to reach larger audiences, and I yeah. knew that would be a way to do it. Yeah. So. Dude, and can you explain the first for for you, the first video we shot and like your experience with that. Oh yeah, with Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were yeah. in like, a few different locations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, drove around. We basically drove around Jersey. Yeah, we went to the train station in Rawway uh, to, to uh, uh, elementary school. Yeah, we went to the elementary school, basically, to the high school. Yeah. Um. So it was uh, I was just so excited for the whole process. <laughs> was, this is my first video, like yeah. it's gonna be crazy. And you was doing it obviously, so I was like, I know it's gonna be fire. Um. But it was special, man. Just you know, seeing the shots and taking them, and then looking on your camera to see yeah. how it looked. I was like, "This is crazy! I'm really doing." Was, this right was now. it like kind of like a feeling of like you were performing this song outside of like the studio and like yeah. for your friends and family? Yeah. Like, did it take like did it take you like a first like take or two to like really feel? I mean, it's a feeling out process sure. like, when you shoot mm -hmm. with someone for the first time, like especially music. You got to really learn who that person is. Yeah. How directable they are, you know, what they can do, what, sure. what you want. Um, but, yeah, like, how was that, like, for you? Was it different? Like, was it a different feel? Were you surprised by anything when yeah, filming? I, I was just, uh, I kind of had, like, a, I made it moment, like, damn, like, I'm really doing this music yeah. stuff for real. Like, so it was, uh, I was definitely surprised, obviously, yeah. about, like, you know, how it's all coming out, coming together. Um, you know, my ability to do it in front of the camera and these different yeah. scenarios and, uh, you know, scenes or whatever, I was kind of like, damn, I could do this. Like, so I kind of shocked myself, um, you know, for, yeah, I shocked myself, man. I didn't expect it for real. Was there any surprises, like, during the process of filming? Like, oh, I didn't expect this to happen or, like, especially towards, like, the production side of things? Uh, nah, I just, honestly, I was like, I was letting T like, do his magic, yeah. man. It was really, like, low key. It was so low key. Yeah. Because it was just us two. Like, mm -hmm. but then, like, the the video started to grow a bit because I think, like, the last one or one of the last ones we shot. Yeah. Like. Is that the one on the boat? He had, like, 20. It's not. He had, like, 20, like, 20 of your boys come. Yeah, just for sure. And just be a part mm -hmm. of the video. Yeah, that was in high school. And that, that in itself, yeah, like, the 
came to the high school and like that in itself was like damn man like look at this support right yeah, here and bro. I, I remember some guys like had other like mm. they might have only been there for a day or, or something like it, that man. yeah they still came and that's why supported it and that was that was funny because you know jameer's in the mindset of like knowing what a music video is yeah. and i had to kind of explain that yeah, to 20 funny. other guys <laughs> like all right there just, just vibe out yeah <laughs> no, no. sometimes when you say that to someone like you say with the cameras off and they get it and then the cameras on you'd be like yeah but how do i vibe yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh what's the vibe it's like, <laughs> it's like when the song plays like how do you know yeah. vibe to it Damn. but that what's was that? that was an experience i mean now if we did one it would just be like I'm not saying that those weren't good. <laughs> yeah, it would be, be a different level. Now it would just be, the, it's, it would be insane. Yeah, it would actually sure. be insane. For sure. But damn, man. So you working on new, yeah, I feel like man. you're always working on. Yeah, like I just yeah. left the studio uh, last night, actually. I was in there for three hours. You know, I uh, had my producer mix and master a few tracks. Uh, Where do you go? Uh, there's this studio called Rose City Studios mm. in uh, Milltown. Where? Oh, Milltown. Yeah, yeah, so it was like right, it's like, 15 minutes from my crib mm -hmm. in North Brunswick. So I go there, nice little setup. You know, mm -hmm. you got a green room and everything if you want to shoot music videos and stuff in there. Um, mm -hmm. But I've been working with him since I started making music. He started off in his house, producing in there, and, and then now he's in a big studio. So um, recorded some stuff last night. Uh, my youngest brother actually made a song. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I got him involved with it a little bit, so that was good. Does he have like his stage name yet? Nah, not yet, not yet. I mean, Jabron, pretty. Yeah, he probably go like Chill Bron or Bron, yeah. something like that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm still making music and you know, getting into it for real. And with with your MacBook, why do you think it's like important to, for like artists to learn how to kind of do that on their own and like their own time? Yeah, like I that was a great investment. Like it was it was you know pricey, but it was the best investment I could have made for my music just because, you know. Um, being able to record your songs on your MacBook, learn how to do, you know, the basic things and yeah. to take it to a professional to just mix and master saves you so much more time. So if you go into a studio for a three hour session, instead of maybe getting three songs done because you have to record yeah. and mix and master, you getting, you know, six songs done. So um, I would say it's it's a big investment and it'll be a great opportunity for, you know, artists or whoever wants to deal with music to get a MacBook and learn how to record their own song. And what about being like in the studio? Yeah. Like, can you touch on a little bit like how important is how important it is to not just be in something like on your own? Like, yeah. it it takes a collaborative effort. What yeah. even even if you are your own like, you know, an individual artist? Yeah, like it takes somebody else to kind of like show show you show you some things too. How, how's that been working alongside like? another producer oh yeah um, or even other artists at times yeah it's been it's been great man um obviously i know i didn't know everything you know yeah. um and you know we all need help you know what yeah. i'm saying we can't do anything by ourselves especially something as music taking it as serious as i'm trying to take it um you know it's a collaborative effort, effort for sure you know he uh knows the ins and outs of all the music things you know the stems the tracks the stacking of vocals all of that kind of stuff and uh it's been a great, you know, collaboration with, with me and him since, you know, 2020 when I started making music. So I embraced it since I started with him. And so now, now it's just the future. Yeah. Now it's just the future. And you, you don't really have like a path that like you're just kind of just testing the waters yeah. out. I'm sure some teams have probably reached out and. Yeah, I'm, I'm testing the waters for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, my agent or uh, well, the agents I've been talking to from family, friends. And, yeah. Uh, we've been discussing all that kind of stuff. So once I have a, something finalized, I'll know. We'll have to do an announcement video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might have to. For real. And then when you go out and you do your thing, man, and succeed, we're going to have you back on. And yeah, most stuff. Man, chop it up again about all the things you achieve. Rapid fire? Thing. Yeah, rapid fire. You know I'm going to have something else going in my head. <laughs> uh, so rapid fire is just like we're just going to kick you questions just okay. quick quick answers back but it's random you know what i mean let but. people get to know you a little more personable level yeah um you got it yeah favorite class at seton hall favorite class at seton Dang hall yeah. all my classes are online classes for real so. oh shit. oh because when you went to seton hall yeah. it was, oh it's covid yeah oh shit i was in grad school Damn. grad school so um he didn't get a chance to step on the seal yeah <laughs> i would say my learning as a way of being course i guess Mm. Yeah. yeah, so I'll say that course. Best best food spot in Jersey. Best food spot in Jersey. I'm a big soul food guy, so I'm probably gonna have to say uh, Amazing Taste. 
Amazing. It's a soul. It's a soul food spot. I believe it's in uh, South Plainfield. I think I've been there before. They got like chicken there too, they got right? Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yeah. So, Damn, <laughs> no, uh, I'm pretty sure I've been there. <laughs> My mom took me. Yeah. So I would say I would say that spot for real. That, you got, they got whiting, Chips, fish. Yeah, they, they uh-huh. got an all soul food. You know, they drinks pretty good, pies, all that. So. I would say there, amazing taste. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to go there. Shout out, amazing taste. We're leaving here though. Shout out to that. <laughs> oh, we're leaving here, but yeah. <laughs> Top three music artists. And Drake's always been my favorite artist. Uh, outside of him, I mean, I, I like a lot of artists, man. I would say the people I listen to probably the most frequently would be Drake, uh, Blue, Young Blue. Yeah. And uh, on the rapping side, I would probably have to say uh, Meek Mill. Yeah. yeah. Um, go to pair of kicks. What are those? The pandas? Yeah, I'm big on I'm big I'm on dunks. Ben Ben is like he's a shoe guy. He yeah, saw that. I'm big, I'm big on dunks. <laughs> he was laughing then. I just said, yeah, that. for sure. I'm big on dunks, but I like uh, Jordan fours as well. Mm-hmm. Jordan four. Mm-hmm. So it's between you know. Ah, right, your favorite favorite pair of Jordan fours. I probably have to say my first ever pair of Jordan fours with the Oreo fours. Mm-hmm. When they first came out, that yeah. was years ago. That was my first pair. That was probably my most, my favorite pair because they, you know. Ben, your favorite pair of Jordan 4s. It's either either Breads or Fire Red. Yeah. Mine are the M&Ms. Just bread over my <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> which <laughs> which <laughs> M&Ms? <laughs> <laughs> no. Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. It got to be that pair. That's sentimental to me, I guess. So. Ben. Overrated basketball player. Overrated yeah. basketball player. I mean... That's tough, bro. <laughs> you are always trying to, <laughs> to <laughs> 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 don't let them suck you in. I want the pot to the base. Yeah, I'm underrated really basketball player. Then <laughs> Joe would be like your least favorite friend. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, underrated basketball player. Yeah, I would say uh, we talking in the league. We talking. Anyway, I want, I want, I want one that people might know, and then one on the, on the scene. I feel like people are sleeping on my uh, on my youngest brother for sure, um, and Jaquan's been gone for a while, so I would say they're sleeping on him too. You know, they don't really know what he's capable of. But he's I gonna show every, he gonna show everybody. Yeah, he will. Uh, both you gonna will. see him on Sports Center top ten. Yeah, Talk for sure. Somebody. Both of them will for sure. Oh yeah. Um, in the league, I think uh, Shea Gillis Alexander. Mm. I feel like he's like really good, and people still aren't, you know, Rapping putting him in that. Down. Yeah, putting him in that category with some of the elite mm-hmm. elite guards. So I'll say him. Is that same? Your favorite tattoo you got? My favorite tattoo I got, and that's tough because everyone is like a got a special meaning to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's tough. <laughs> I probably say uh, maybe this one. I got a lion uh, with a blue eye, and it says yeah. mindset is everything. So the whole process behind that was like a blue eye for a clear head, like keep yeah. a clear head, and uh, you know focus on your mindset when you when you out there competing. Hell yeah! yeah. Dream dream collab, Drake. Obviously, Drake. everything Drake touches goes crazy. Just so, Drake. yeah, I would say Drake for sure. Uh, you have a f- place that you feel most inspired to make music, or yeah. I mean, outside is cool, but like probably in my room, I just yeah. like tone everything out, turn the TV off, and just play instrumentals, and mm-hmm. then I just figure stuff out from there. You had to build a dream team around you. Four other players. Who you picking? My two brothers. Oh, there you go. Us two. All right, so you at point. Yeah, I'm at point. My brother. Both two, two and the three. Two and the three. I probably have my boy uh, Tyree Samuel at the five. No, he was number five. Number for, four. Number four. Number four. See y'all. Oh yeah, he's the one that threw that that immediately. Yeah, exactly. My <laughs> he really set it off for me. <laughs> and at the four, I probably either have my boy Marvin Bragg Jr. that played with me at American at the time. Okay, it's like one of my closest friends. Or my other boy Alexis Yetna that was at Cedar Hall too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's one of those two, man. That's the hard. That's a hard position to be. I'm in. gonna put your pops at five. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 that's the real Harris one. Yeah, my, <laughs> real, no, like <laughs> out there in my uh, one of my episodes inside the hustle. Yeah, the one where Jaquan's making his comeback. Uh, yeah, him and your dad a little one on one for a second. Ah, for real. Yeah, my dad. He, he's been competitive <laughs> since he was playing. You know what I'm saying he's. He played uh, basketball, football in high school at Elizabeth High and went to Rutgers to play mm-hmm. football. Um, he yeah. could have went D1 for basketball, too. But he was good, too, man. He, he could really shoot it, super yeah. athletic. So, you know, his competitive competitive edge never leaves him, man. So I feel like that's a good place to end off. Yeah. Can we touch on your parents real quick, man? Yeah, yeah and like, sure. Just that, like, I don't know, man. They they did something right. Yeah. What? 
appreciate it. What about like your your mom and your dad like mean so much to you and your brothers and like the path they paved for you guys? I mean, they just they showed us the way. You know, they 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 definitely shaped the men that we've become. Um and you know, our growth they've been a major impact on all of that. You know, just uh you know, my dad just showing me how to how to be a man's man, you know, how to work for what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, block out the noise. Um, the main message that he gave to me, that he gave to me over the years was that it's okay to be different. Um, and me taking that in, you know, you know, growing up doing certain things that most other people didn't do or, you know, maybe not going to the mini's parties as much and really focusing yeah. on my craft. And some of uh, my peers would have thought that was lame. But my dad was, he told me it's okay to be different. And I feel like that's what it really you know, gave me the ability uh, and the mindset to get to where I've gotten to and have the opportunities to have three Division One scholarships and, you know, go to a high-level high school and, and now be able to play pro. So my dad's point of view, he just, you know, I couldn't have asked for a better father, a better role model. My mom, you know, the same thing. She showed me uh, what to look for in a woman. You know, my dad showed me how a woman should be treated. And, you know, my mom just uh, being there for us, supporting us, caring and loving for us. You know, taking us to all the RAU games and high school games and trips where my dad had to work. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and man. I was because I was showing someone the episode the other night, the the episode of Jaquan. Yeah, and um, it was when I, I was I was like I was like you see right there I was like it's Jaquan's workout. Yeah, but Jameer and his dad are there. Jaquan's eight at the time like eighteen years yeah, old. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I was like he drove himself. They don't got to be there. I was like. I, I was like, I was like that day. I was like, the fact that like they're even there, yeah, is like, for what? Like most parents at a certain age, it's like well, once you get to a point where you drive yourself, yeah, like they let you go. Mm-hmm. Fuck am I going? Yeah, my parents was hands on. They've been hands on from the start, mm-hmm. um, you know, and a lot of so much time to get us to the point that we're at is yeah. that, you know, me and my brothers all had the same mindset as far as the basketball thing. Like we're not having my parents pay for school. Like not much time they put in. So yeah. due to that, that's why we work so hard to hopefully be, you know, grateful enough and blessed enough to have the opportunity to play Division One. you know. And they're, they're entrepreneurs themselves, Yeah, right? Your mom has a salon? Yeah, hair salon, hair salon. Um, my and dad's a yes. longshoreman, but he owns a barbershop. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my mom has a bunch of other ideas that she'd be trying to get into, and uh, she does, like, creative T-shirts and yeah. creates T-shirts for people and stuff like that. So they always on the go, they're always trying to make something happen. And always, always. So, you know, don't have to join the hair. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, bro, link up with the Harris's is most stuff. and uh, what's one piece of advice you'd like to give your younger self I would say to you know to find a balance yeah um I do feel like the work that I put in over the years you know when I was younger doing three four workouts a day and all of that kind of stuff paid off but you know in hindsight you know it I didn't I wasn't sleeping as much I wasn't you know getting the rest the proper rest I needed things of that nature so I would say find a balance um Definitely uh, realizing the balance between, you know, giving your all, getting the proper rest, uh, focusing on my nutrition. That's another thing, you know, obviously being young and an athlete, most guys just eat whatever they want and kind of yeah. just burn it off. But if I could look back and tell myself to really lock in on my nutrition and um, tighten up with that, I definitely would because I know that could be very helpful. And then piece of advice you would give your older self? Stay patient. Uh, stay the course. Uh, it's not going to be a smooth ride. You know, there's going to be bumps and obstacles in the road. Uh, but just keep pushing. Uh, the older you get, it probably wears on you more and more to have to keep pushing through things and, you know, um, finish, get to the finish line despite obstacles. But just keep pushing. And uh, where can the people find out more about you? Uh, on my Instagram, uh, you know, at uh, Ayo Mir, A-Y-O-O-M-I-R-R. Uh, Twitter, I don't really be on that much, but it's J to the Izzo. Uh and yeah, that's pretty much it. TikTok, the same thing. Ayo, Mir, I be making TikTok videos. YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, I don't have a YouTube page for real. Uh, I think I had one that we made for a while ago with the music videos. Yeah. That was about it. I haven't been on that, but we'll uh, get that thing going again. Yeah, but TikTok too is Ayo, Mir. I be on there making videos and stuff too. Awesome, Hell yeah! And if you want to leave us off to a quote to that camera, when life gets hard, keep pushing, keep your head up, and in due time, everything will work out in your favor. Jameer Harris, everyone, appreciate you, guys. <laughs>